Welcome to the Bayou Country Music Association podcast presented to you by Southern Sound Outfitters. I'm Jacob and today I'm joined by a very special guest that has been on our chart, Miss Kenzie Coppin. How are you doing today? Hello. I'm doing great. It is um, Memorial Day weekend and it's been awesome. I played a show here in Granbury yesterday in Texas and uh, yeah, it's, it's going great. Awesome. And we're very, uh, over here by Country Music Association, we try to get everywhere on the map, but there's so much uh, talent in the state of Texas that I love getting a chance to interview Texas musicians and and been, you know, been looking forward to this one. So uh, let's go and get a little background on, on yourself, where are you originally from in Texas. Well, I was actually born in Belton, Texas, but I grew up um, near San Antonio, out in the hill country. It's a small town called Bolverde. It's not so small anymore, but it was when I grew up there. Um, I grew up there, and then I went to high school in Nashville. My parents moved me up there when I was 13, and uh, graduated there, and then came back to Texas um, to kind of find myself as an artist, and... uh, it was fantastic. Um, I just recently moved to Nashville again um, because I got signed to a publishing deal. So it's it's been all over the place. <laughs> awesome. And Be- you mentioned Belle Verde. We I did an interview with uh, Megan Ashley, artist, uh, up and coming text artist, and she was actually from the same town. So that's awesome. Really? Yep. She's uh, got that's a great. song out on our list, uh, the Texas that I've known, and uh, she she's from that same area. So that's awesome. Awesome. Now, at what age? You, you mentioned the thirteen. You, you moved to Nashville. Is, is that around? What age did you really start? loving music and singing and getting into it it could you know early in life six years old or was it more of a yeah yeah you know i since i can remember which probably about two years old is uh, as far back i can remember i've just been drawn to music mainly country music um you know the stories and the the message um to country music and things like that the authenticity um so i the first time i performed i was six years old um at my kindergarten talent show and from then on you know i just i had to be on stage i was hooked so um i told my parents when i was about eight years old that I needed help. I needed to be on stage. Um, you know, it wasn't enough to just sing in the living room anymore. Um, and they took me very seriously, probably because I was crying my eyes out when I told them. But um, they started taking me to jam sessions. Um, that there's a place in San Marcos called Cheatham Street Warehouse, and uh, they took me there on Monday nights. Um, few members of George Strait's band, the Ace and the Whole Band, uh, they <clears throat> did a, just a jam. Um, they'd play, you know, cover songs and whatnot, and you could get up and sing. Mm-hmm. So I would do that every Monday, stay out till about 3 in the morning, and get up and go to school the next day. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, it was it was a fun, fun life. <laughs> um, but, you know, I, I really frequented a couple different places. Um oh. Between the ages of 8 and 12, started singing with some bigger bands, Two Tons of Steel, which is a big Texas band, um, and the Ace and the Hole band. And, uh, you know, it, it just it kind of grew. I started meeting more people in the business, started, you know, uh, getting on bigger stages. And someone told us um, that I need to go to Nashville just to just to see what country music is based on and and uh, the history and whatnot. So I went up there and I uh, had a couple meetings and you know I was I was ten years old the first time I went up there and uh, it was it was very cool. I went to the Grand Ole Opry, went backstage and and just kind of kind of learned about the history of country music and where their roots stem from. Um, well. When I was 12, Two Tons of Steel asked me to uh, sing with them in Nashville at the Opry Plaza parties. It's a free show outside the Opry during the summer. Mm-hmm. 
So I sang with them, and the general manager came out and heard me, and after I sang, he pulled me aside and said, hey, how would you like to play on the big stage tonight? And uh, I was over the moon. I was 11 years old, and and, uh, I had an hour to prepare. (laughs) Wow. Um, So I got to sing on the Grand Ole Opry that night with Two Tons of Steel. At 11 years old. At 11 years old, it was very cool. It was, uh, I, I, I still need to dig up the uh, the videos and, and get them online eventually. Um, but it was really cool. So they invited me back the following year when I was 12 to do my own set on the Plaza Parties. Um, so I ended up hiring George Strait's band since I had been playing with them for a couple years. <clears throat> At the age of 12. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was, it was incredible. Um, we had band rehearsals in Texas it was the end of July that we were having these rehearsals and we were, we had them in Ann Holt dance hall and there's no AC there so it was like 105 degrees yeah. you know Texas is <laughs> uh, not a yeah. cool place no so you know practicing 90 minute set over and over and over um, you know it really really taught me a lot you know, at age 12, just learning that, um, soaking it up like a sponge, it really put into perspective how how much hard work goes into it. Yeah. <clears throat> so, and we got to go um, play the play the plaza parties, a 90-minute set, and they asked us to play on the Opry again that night. So, I got to uh, <clears throat> play with George Strait's band on the Opry, and it was really cool because a couple of members had never played on the Opry before because George... Um, because of his routing and things like that, he didn't play the Opry much. And you're, so it was really cool. You're 12 years old and saying, "Oh, this is no big deal. I've done this already." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was it was a really incredible one of the highlights of my life, and um, you know, just just kind of skyrocketed my dreams. So you know, made it obvi- made them even. Obviously, I mean, you're telling me all you know, at the age of 12, you're playing, you know, on, on the Opry. But I normally ask, what is the some of your musical influences growing up that you listen to, whether it be country musicians or rock and roll or gospel or jazz, or that you, mm-hmm. you, that you loved and that you kind of inspired to. Yeah. Um, well, you know, when I was young, I I like to uh, to sing along with Martina McBride and Leanne Grimes and Shania Twain and Jody Messina and all those females. But but I was really into the older stuff like Keith Whitley, George Jones, George Strait. Um, you know, uh, Merle Haggard and all that good, all that good stuff, all that good music. Um, awesome. <clears throat> yeah, but I also loved classic rock. Um, Brian Adams is a huge influence to me. Um, but yeah, so <clears throat> I learned early on, you know, what I enjoy and what I wanted to aspire to be. So we did that, and uh, the following year, my parents moved me up there just to be around it, and, you know, they, they felt like that was kind of a promising thing, that I could, if I could get a gig like that, then yeah, <laughs> sky's I, I, the it, limit. Exactly. Uh, you get to play on the Grand Ole Opry to live, and the only choice, you, I would have moved you up there, too, so <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Uh, they don't just let anybody play that 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 stage, and to the right. people in, that have been on there, it's it's iconic. Yeah, it, it was a huge deal, still to this day. I mean, I my one of my biggest dreams and goals is to get back on that stage as an adult. <clears throat> you know. Yeah. And uh, you know, I I believe that I'll get there. It's just going to oh, take some more hard work. Definitely, and I, I I would put my money on it as well that you'll be back on there soon. So <laughs> well, thank you. Getting into you you know you explained that you moved to Nashville and at this time you're 13. You've been you know playing on the stage of the Opry and you've been playing with George Strait's band and, and, and these other bands and. Well, what point, I guess, would it be after you graduated or that you um, you decided that I'm going to go and, or, or maybe you had another another journey that you got with uh, as far as ri- writing your own stuff, putting out your own stuff and, and getting right. out as an artist? Mm-hmm. Um, so when I moved there, my dad bought me my first guitar and basically said, hey, if you want to be different, 
write your own songs and play guitar. And so I started writing um, when I was 13 and <clears throat> playing guitar. Really got into it when I was 14, like writing, you know, five songs a week. <laughs> and not all of them were great, but it was it was good practice. Um, so I ended up graduating a year early because I hated school. And I just wanted to do she music. Mean, so. she, she means she was very smart and graduated a year. <laughs> Uh, no, I was very diligent, and I was I was working really hard. I actually had to go to school um, for two years straight, no break whatsoever, wow. um, to make that happen. But I made it happen, and I uh, I had some unfortunate events happen when that when that you know after I graduated, and so I took I took about a year to reevaluate things and. Um, country music was kind of going in a different direction at that time yeah. in Nashville it was, it was kind of changing to a uh, pop sound and I'm traditional old school so my oh. mentors told me to go back to Texas and find myself as an artist so that's what I did I uh, <clears throat> I questioned doing music at, at one point when I moved back I, I kind of lost my way for a couple years and I went back to school which is crazy um still paying off that debt <laughs> but um you know I I thought about going back to school to be a teacher I just wasn't sure if if I wanted to continue with my musical journey but um I got on a stage with William Clark Green at his CD release show about five years ago and and it you know just lit my fire back up and I knew that I, I had to do it, you know, I, I couldn't give up, couldn't, I, I, you can't quit, you know, the only way to be successful in this business is if you don't quit, exactly. um, so I got right back into it, started writing more songs, and started touring Texas, um, great, great state of music and amazing the talent that's flooded in that state, it's, it's unreal, oh, yeah. and yeah going back to there to find your way as a musician and, and that that there's no other place that I could say that you would find that traditional sound and that country music sound that right. Texas offers and and that's that's why I love uh, I love hearing artists out of there I love the, the talent that comes out of there and and they stick to yes. their traditional mm. traditional roots and uh, that they, they don't waver in that so definitely a great place to be from much less go back home to that to find your sound and find yourself Oh yeah, yeah. It, it was a it was a whirlwind. I'll say that I, I spent a lot of nights on couches, ate a lot of fast food, um, <laughs> drank a lot of cheap beer. But but I'm here, and it's you know it's it's all it's. I feel like I've kind of I've kind of um, turned a corner as far as as my status in music. Um, you know, I'm I'm getting recognized. And, you know, it, it didn't take long. I mean, it, it was about four years of, of really putting my nose to the grindstone and, and you know, driving myself everywhere, all over Texas. Creating you know, a fan base. Miles. Yeah, creating a fan base and a following and, you know. Right. And I, I'll fast forward to March 2016. You come out with your EP, six-song EP. Mm-hmm. How long did that, was that some songs that you had in your pocket for a long time that you, or, or was it just something that you put together all at that time? Um, I actually had those, um, except for, there's one on there that I wrote the day before we recorded, uh, White Trash Widow, but the other five I wrote as a teenager. Um, the first song on the EP I actually wrote when I was 14, and it was, uh, it was a song to my dad, actually. Um, that song's called Letting Go, but, um, anyways, yeah, I, I really wanted to get those songs out. I felt like if I didn't record those as an independent artist, they would never see the light of day, so, um, and I wanted to kind of see get some feedback as far as if people enjoy it or not and I have gotten such a great response um it's been incredible people um you know praising the, the traditional sound and, and the old school sound and that's what I wanted it was it was risky because at the time 
you know, people were telling me, you need to do something edgy, you need to do something with attitude, um, something a little more modern, but I wasn't, I was not going to budge. I, you know, I really wanted to bring that sound back, and that's a, a huge goal of mine to this day. So, it's been, it's been a great two years, but I'm ready to get back in the studio. I've been writing a lot, and I'm, I'm just ready to get back in there. So you, me- you mentioned that you you had these songs in your back pocket. The song "Why You Still Need Me" that's been on our our playlist in our top twenty five for a while mm-hmm. that you recorded with William Clark Green. You had that song written with an, in mind of bringing someone on the track, or did that just? Oh happen? yeah, yeah. We we me and uh, there's a a guy in Nashville. His name's Greg Bates. He's fantastic. He had a record deal for a minute. Um, yeah. But he, we wrote that song as a duet when I was 16. Um, so, yeah, I always wanted someone on it, but it, was, it wasn't until, you know, I met William Clark Green and played with him a few times. I was like, man, he's perfect for this song. And he doesn't do, he doesn't really do very many uh, sentimental, yeah, you know, not, deep songs. So exactly. I thought it would be a cool it's a venture for contrast. Him. Yeah. And it's a great, great, a great duet and a great, you know, molding of uh, of artists and song. And y'all, 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 just clicked, and it, it seems like that was the right choice. So the, yeah. you obviously said you played with him. Is that whenever you got introduced with him, he jumped on it right away, or? Yeah, it was. It was just a couple months after I played some shows with him and. He just so happened to be passing through Austin that day, and it, it just worked out. He came in, knocked it out in an hour, and it's been really cool. It was my first single, um, and I th- it went to number 35 on the Texas charts, which was pretty cool. You know, top 40 for my first single. I wasn't sure if people were going to enjoy it. It was It's a very long song. It's like 4 minutes, 27 seconds, or something like that. So the fact that radio even played it was incredible. Um, but, you know, Will has, has been very supportive and, and, uh, it was a fun, fun little project. And you also had the single, of course, Lie to Me off of that EP that's been doing, you had very good success as well, right? Yeah, yeah, that, that got up to, I think it was number 31 or 30, um, and, you know, it's, it's another slow, kind of slow song. I wrote that song when I was about 19, um, and yeah, I'm, I'm very happy with with where it went and where the other song went. I'm just so pumped to get a new single out and some new music because um, I've really been focusing on my songwriting the past year. So, and before we get into the new music, I, I want to touch on you. Also had a in 2016 you released. Uh, Shake Studio Series, kind of an EP of is it was more of acoustic songs, correct? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, what was the story behind that? Um, I had a friend DJ Dugan up in Fort Worth. Um, he started this. It, it was previously called Rattle, and, uh, and they changed the name to Shake. But um, he just asked me. He said, "Hey, you know this." We'll record these songs, we'll video it, and we'll put it on our YouTube channel. Um, and most of those songs I had just written. So, you know, they were, I'm not the biggest fan of those recordings, but there are a lot of people out there that really enjoy them. And they're like, when are you going to record, you know, Beer Tender um, yeah. with a full band or whatever? So it's it's been really good to get that feedback from fans um, as far as, the song content you know not necessarily my performance of them yeah it's, but it's a it's a raw acoustic you generally get down to the lyrics and the, the the feeling of a song really yeah absolutely yeah those are all just one take um brand new songs so it was a very cool little project as well um good way to get some more music out and that's kind of coming back into the, th- the series of things i know a lot of artists are featuring uh acoustic type uh cuts of their songs on spotify and stuff like mm-hmm. that and it's starting to catch you know a wave of popularity and uh 
I know it, it like we made, you had mentioned earlier about how country had taken a kind of a turn back then and now I, I, I genuinely want to believe it's taken a turn for the better of, of more traditional and more you know great songwriting and, and less uh, of the popness and the right. and the ups so that that's something hopeful and I definitely uh, definitely see that in in, in the I guess not main mainstream top ten country radio, but the under echelon of those Nashville artists that people that obviously you know living there that you go and see, you know, uh, like Ash. I seen you had a on your social media the other day, Ashley McBride. I love right. Ashley McBride, and you know artists like that that are that are on the verge of just getting out there, and that's uh, right. that's something that's that's good for the whole genre. Yeah. Well, um, you know, I. I wouldn't um, have gone back to Nashville if if I didn't see that it was taking a turn um, for the better, and I'm I'm so excited about it. You know, Ashley McBride is is extremely um, raw and real and yeah. genuine, and her songwriting is incredible. And I've been I've been writing with. Um, a lot of, of the people that wrote her record and uh, it's it's so refreshing to get back to the storytelling songs yeah. and the songs that have some attitude and um, that are you know out of the box singing yeah. about st- writing about stuff that that you just don't you don't think about you don't hear about anymore and you know like paint me a Birmingham um Type stuff. Yep, and it's going back to to that uh, less of a party ride back road type right. to telling stories like that, and the, the female the female ju- artists that are emerging and and really blowing things out that we haven't seen since the Shania Twain's and in, in uh-huh. the nineties that that's really been died out is is awesome, and you know there's so many right now on the mainstream that have taken off, you know, in the past year, and then. Like you, you mentioned Ashley McBride. I, I've, I've always loved Ashley McBride's uh, story and her music, and got to see her earlier in the year. And uh, she deserves all the all the all the credit she's getting, and if not more. And uh, oh, we, sure. they have. I mean, one of my my faves from Louisiana girl, Lane, Lainey Wilson. I mean, she's doing, mm-hmm. doing big things, and I, just it's exciting for the female. Uh, wave of artists that are that are making waves in country music and uh, definitely less of the, less of the pop style Taylor Swift thing that used to be going on. Nothing against right. Taylor Swift, but bringing back that traditional sound and and that's that's something that you are definitely playing a big part in. Well, thank you. That's my goal. I I want to uh, I want to help it come back. And I think it, people are starving for it. And once it breaks loose it's just gonna be like the 90s all over again <laughs> yep it's uh it's refer- i mean i'm an, i grew up in the 90s and that's listening to that you know all the all the great 90s artists you know the lawrence's and the diffies and the travis tritts and the you know alan jackson's and the uh-huh. all of them and to hear the sounds of that coming back is awesome and I have, I have, a, a, I guess you could say a big. I try not to do biased opinions on here, and, but I am a personal huge fan of Randall King and his album that he put out. And every time I hear the the album and the songs, it's like I'm in a time machine back to listening to that old '90s style stuff. Yes, and that's awesome to yeah. hear. Well, yeah, and you know, uh, Randall and I have kind of come up together in Texas in the Texas scene. Um, he's. He's really making waves in Nashville, um, and he's been spending a lot of time up there. And, and we've it. always we've always connected on the on the level of we want to bring that sound back. And he's doing a great job. I mean, he's he's gotten contracts a lot faster than I have, but that's just kind of the name of the game. Um, and uh, yeah, his album is fantastic. I, I I think it's great. And to see, you know. It, these these platforms such as the Nashville scene, uh, you know, whether it be you know Whiskey Riff or, or those type that 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 go over all of the mainstream, for him to be mentioned on that and that sound to be mentioned, and I've sure. seen that it's, I can't remember which which uh, platform. Rolling Stone. 
Rolling Stone, and then there was another one that mentioned something about when Garth Brooks, they talked with Garth Brooks and how, Mm -hmm. and to see that on the mainstream level, it makes me happy to say, okay, he's going to bring in a wave of of all these, you know, for, you know as well as I do that Texas is flooded full of that, and really the whole country, but flooded full of those artists, and and they're going to have a platform to go by because of this, and that's, that's something, it's like trailblazing almost, you know? Yeah, that's so great. And, uh, you know, and Randall and Caitlin Butts, um, we've really been working in Nashville lately. So I think that, you know, the more artists that that embrace Nashville and yeah. that want to make a difference in, in country music, it's possible. And it's, you know, Nashville is not... Um, it's not a negative thing. It's, no, it's, it's, it's actually, you know, that's that's part of the business. It's a it's a melting and, pot of yeah. everybody, right? And it's really like going off of the Texas scene. There, there's so many great artists, but you know as well as I do that they, the great ones that stick to the Texas and Texas and Texas, and having artists like you and Randall and and others that are going to the Nashville to bring that sound is mm-hmm. is, is great. Yeah, I mean, it's scary, you know, it's it's like... It's leaving a comfort gonna, zone. Yeah, and not knowing if they're going to take to it, not knowing if if they're going to bite, you know. Yeah. It really has to be a, the perfect time when you break out of Nashville. But, you know, I, I applaud the independent artists that, that worked so hard to get to a point where they can have a platform in Nashville... Or on a, a international level. Yeah, or, I mean, you know, Cody Johnson, another uh, selling right. out, selling out, you know, stadium arenas, and did not, you know, mm-hmm. doing it. And uh, one that I think gets not near enough credit, Aaron Watson, for the things he's yeah. done in the music industry, and uh, really, I mean, all over the, the, not just from Texas, but you know, uh, it's great and. I have, I have a few friends and stuff that that been in Nashville and they uh, they you know sing song right and they they say it I mean it, you go to Nashville and it's like uh, you can be a big fish in a small pond but when you get out there it's it's a grind every day and it's, yes. you know so many talented people are trying to do the same thing as you and you kind of gotta humble yep. yourself and, and and not try to be somebody that you gotta be original you know and and obviously exactly. obviously you are that. And it, well, thank you. I appreciate that. It, it takes, it's a lot of risk. You know, it, it is a lot of risk to try and play the game, but also be different. And, uh, you know, I think that, that Nashville is taking to these independent artists really great. Like, they, they're doing, they're just, they're opening up their arms and saying, we get it and we want to help. And, I think that's just amazing. Yeah. So, you know, um, I'm just going to keep grinding and grinding away, but and I'm still touring in, in Texas. Um, I won't I won't be quitting that. <laughs> explain to the to the listeners. I mean, obviously people maybe that haven't been to Nashville, they think in they most people think Nashville is a, you know, all all the big all stars are there, but Nashville is really a music town that embraces these independent artists and you, you know you go down and you can hear just original music non-stop all the time yeah yeah it's um you know there is Nashville is um it's funny cause you can go down the street and you can hear a cover band that plays 90's country or you know top 40 music and then you can go a mile down the road and hear a hit songwriter who wrote your favorite songs of all time um it's it's really incredible and it's such a small small town that you know everybody knows everybody yep and um you're just gonna get a lot of genuine you know if you if you just want to have a good time go to broadway and hear hear top 40 music but if you go to these writers writers nights and things it's it's pretty incredible who you can definitely who you can encounter it's definitely a great uh thing and down here in in louisiana we have uh uh, in baton rouge they have a songwriter festival called the third street songwriter festival that's been going on a few years and uh they've been bringing down 
uh, I don't know if you know CJ Solar, but his mom's the one that actually started it, and uh, CJ CJ wrote co-wrote Up Down, and that's you know of course mm-hmm. Morgan Wallen's doing great things with that, and CJ has his his hand in a lot of things, and he kind of brings down these songwriters, and and it brings all the songwriters together, and you get to hear that kind yes. of a songwriter round that Nashville has, and you know uh, I, I brought my I brought my girlfriend to it because she'd never really been to that kind of a scene, and and to see, you know, they had he had brought Brent Anderson and Clint Daniels, and uh, uh-huh. you know, and uh, we're sitting talking to them, and then they start singing their songs, and and you know, my girlfriend was like, oh my god, I didn't know these people wrote this, and I'm like, yeah, that's yeah. the songwriters that that have it, you know, and to hear the stories behind it, like Brent's uh, song, somebody's been drinking that Easton Corbin just cut. You know, mm-hmm. he was telling the story of how it was like been three years or two, three years that he's had it, and it just got yep. picked up, and it's uh, mm-hmm. that's kind of a that's the thing. I mean, it's a it's a hard game, and and you know, this, a lot of people don't realize that the heart of Nashville is songwriting. Yes, and that these songwriters, they that's all they do. They just write songs, yep. and um, you know, I I just want to be. A, a part of it I want to make a difference and I'm um, I'm hoping that I can yeah it's definitely uh, I, I have a few buddies that do nothing but that uh, Dawson Edwards and Brian Frazier uh, Dawson's actually mm-hmm. signed with BMG Nashville but they sitting and they write songs all that just that's what they do and and, and it's it's awesome to, to like I remembered I don't know if you know Joe Fortner I'm sure you've heard of Joe Fortner and he's uh, got this uh, EP out and he's got a song on there called Stereotype that he cut and I remember when I heard it for the first time I was like I've heard this song before and I had went back on my phone and actually had videos of of Dawson and Brian playing the song just you know with about six seven months prior and it was like awesome to see that so getting yeah. cuts now going into that you obviously are writing and, and you mentioned how you're looking to get the new music coming do you are you like open to taking songs that people offer or you rather have all original you know no I you know that's something um that I like to clarify I I do I am a songwriter but there's so many songwriters out there that don't their songs don't get heard because they can't sing them yeah and to be able to sing is is a gift and um You know, I feel like I write songs to, you know, practice my craft and to hopefully make a difference. But as far as recording goes, you know, I want to be like a George Strait. And I'm not saying record all. Or even Jason Aldean. Right. but, But definitely give back to that songwriting community because these guys. They work so hard, and and for ten years they don't get one cut. Exactly, and if it's if it wasn't for them, you know, a lot of artists wouldn't be where they are. Mhm. And you know, like Garth Brooks, he writes a, he's written a lot of his songs, but he's also um, made hits of other people's songs. And like Earl Bud Lee, mm-hmm. um, who you know he's set up for life. He's good. One song, he's good yep. for life. <laughs> so yeah, true. I definitely want to give back on that. Um, on that level but uh still write songs and hopefully other people record my songs awesome and you, what do you have uh, do you have any new music that is done that is waiting or are you just working on new stuff right now well i i pretty much have a full album written and ready to go um i am just looking for funding right now but um pretty soon i'll have a single out and y'all will be one of the first to know awesome yeah yeah that's definitely we look forward to all the uh, new stuff coming and and you know hearing ori- your original stuff and uh you. you know mentioning you moved back to nashville that's where you're currently living right now right mm-hmm. yes so the Nashville life, living there. What is? I guess I like to talk when I when I talk with artists or songwriters that are living there or been there. I like to get a story of. Uh, well, your story kind of blew up the first part of it, your first Nashville moment of being you know, on the van. So I won't go there. But uh, what is a? I guess 
a cool story, an interesting fact. You could say maybe you were in a grocery store or something, seen an artist, a big time artist, or you just got you know walked into a a, a little ride around or seen somebody important or, or big time. Um, sorry. Um, do I? Uh, I'm sorry. Can you just ask to, again? Yeah, I'm sorry. I basically, uh, it, it's when have you had any moments where you just know whether you were casually you know out listening to music or if you were at a grocery store or you were getting see someone and, big. yeah just because i've had oh, people yeah. say you know oh, i just i've seen chris stapleton buying a loaf of bread at kroger and you know i've seen eric church yeah. jogging down the road you know yep yep um yeah it happens all the time um just like the other night ashley mcbride came to um, a writer's night that I was singing at and she got up and sang, you know, four or five songs. Um, you know, Miranda Lambert is always out and about. Uh, I, there's, there's so many artists, yeah, that, that you see them and, and it's, it's not, it's, it, they're just another person. Yeah. They're just enjoying their daily life and nobody really bothers them up there, which is nice. I think that's why most artists live in Nashville. Definitely. So, it sounds to me just that you're a worker, worker, busy bee, but do you ever, I mean, take time off? What kind of hobbies do you have outside of just busting butt, making music, and getting into it? You know, I love um, I love to golf. I love to play pool. Um, I like to lay by the pool. <laughs> um, I, you know, I was just thinking about it the other day. I haven't taken a vacation in, in probably five or six years um but if i were to take a vacation i'd be at the beach for sure um i love to just hang out with my friends um i'm a sucker for dive bars and i think that's because i grew up in a dive bar (laughs) um but you know i i really don't get much time off um if i do I'm more than likely just getting some sleep and yeah. watching Netflix. <laughs> I totally, I totally feel you. Uh, I just, or laundry. Yeah, and uh, she's very busy, folks. I mean, she's. We reached out to each other a while back, and it's been several times we've had to reschedule because it's her mm-hmm. busy schedule. And uh, I totally respect that, and uh, and it's gonna pay off because you're gonna be having some great things and music coming hopefully soon. And, and uh, we'll be you. able to reflect on it and be, you know, all your, your hard work and your your dedication to your craft is very uh, respectable. Thank you. I so appreciate it, and I appreciate you understanding my busy schedule. Uh, I feel bad no, when I, I totally have to uh, push things back or reschedule or whatnot. But it's it's constant. Um, you know, there's stuff popping up all the time, and uh, yeah, I I look forward to maybe getting some success and 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 uh kind of reflecting on the last few years and the hard work that i have put in but i still got a lot of hard work to do (laughs) um i just i can't wait to get new music out for people so what i don't know if you listen to music over your phone or i guess ipods are pretty much obsolete by now but what what would be the last three songs that you have as of current right now that you listen to no matter what genre what it was um, I love hip hop, <laughs> and I love um, pop music. I've been listening to um, that song, "The Middle," uh, Marin Morris mm-hmm. sings. I, I have a heart for Marin because she pretty much did what I'm trying to do. Yep. One of- um, and she's you know she's just tearing it up. I love that song. Um, oh man, there's. Another hip hop song that I've been loving, it's called Mine. And I think the guy's name is like, I can't remember, Bazio or something like that. Um, and, um, you know, I've been listening to a lot of, uh, oh, Casey Musgraves' album. I've had that thing on repeat, her new one. Yeah. Um, and the Brothers Osborne. Their new album is killer. It yeah, definitely knocked it out of the park. I, I mentioned it in a previous interview that that I don't really review a lot of mainstream albums because obviously those guys don't need that. But that is one that I listen to and I have to say, awesome. Every every it's killer. Out. If you haven't been a Brothers Osborne fan, if you listen to it, you are now. Yes, absolutely. So yeah, I mean, I'm I'm kind of all over the map as far as music. I love jazz. I love blues. Um, what would be one of like, 
I'm sorry. What would be one of your if, if you could have a collaboration with any artist, any songwriter, any whether no matter what it is, genre or time period. You know, obviously, I mean, in this time period, but whether it be a mainstream top ten artist or somebody, in, you know, what would be a collaboration you would love to do fantasy wise tomorrow? Yeah, there's two that that I just can't get my mind off of, and that's George Strait. I want to do a duet with him so bad, um, and Jason Aldean. I know that's like out of everyone, out of everything I could pick, but those are those are actual goals of mine, and I'm I'm hoping to make that come true someday. Um, it's definitely great but, goals. I mean, that's some that's some great goals to have. Yeah, um, but I also would love to write a song with um, with Josh Osborne or Shane McAnally, you know. Yeah. Um, and I think that these are these are feasible goals. So hopefully, hopefully I can make it happen. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, you're set up to do so. Obviously, with uh, your your past and your your success that you had and, and what you keep having, and you know, obviously finding your sound. You said you had to move back home to kind of find yourself, but. I, Mm-hmm. I, I feel confident in that you've got that found and, and bringing that that Texas and that's that traditional sound to Nashville with the, the, all the other artists that are doing so and that's something to be applauded well thank you so much I'm I'm just so happy that that um, y'all been playing my music and that you connect with it that's all I that's all I want is is to connect with people through my music and uh, I appreciate everything that you've done. Definitely, and let, you you mentioned that you uh, you were playing show. Do you have any upcoming shows and stuff for summer, or your plans as as far as big shows or, or anything like that? Yeah, I mean, there's something that. Um, well, so I'm gonna be taking another Texas tour um, in August. I'm I'm gonna be really tearing it up for about three weeks, and all of my tour dates are on my website. Um, That's at KinseyCoppin.com, correct? Yes, KinseyCoppin.com. And uh, I try to keep that up to date. I believe it's it's up to date right now. Um, I, I do have some one-off shows this summer, um, but I also am auditioning for something I can't really talk about right now, but um, on Wednesday. So hopefully I'll have some exciting news for you. Wow coming up that's very interesting very interesting um good uh, definitely hope to hear something back now um, you got my my interest with that uh yeah. so you, you mentioned the texas tour that you're going to be tearing it up what's some places you're going to be playing at and around august and stuff um i'm going to be in the fort worth area dallas area um i'm actually going to be playing in oklahoma and oh, I'm trying to think. I don't have my calendar in front of me. Yeah, um, we, we, we obviously folks go and check all this out on her her uh, her website and her social media stuff. Uh, I'm just putting her on the spot here, but uh, <clears throat> definitely she she keeps that up to date. I, I I'll vouch for you because uh, doing my research and looking into stuff, you definitely keep that up to date. And you know, follow her on her Instagram and her uh, yes, Facebook. Please. And uh, do you have a Twitter? I do have a Twitter. I'm not super active, but I do post sometimes. Okay. Well, yeah, definitely go go get on there and give her. Uh, it seems to me that Instagram is the biggest uh, uh, far as platform art, right now. As far as artists in 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 general, like it's so big. As far as uh, I guess you get kind of a personal thing as a fan or as somebody connecting with artists because it's not like a, a manager or a publisher running a Facebook page. You're getting to see what right. they're doing. So yeah, Instagram. Follow her on the Instagram. I know she keeps up. Uh, her stories and stuff and you kind of get inside of, of the Nashville life and the artist life yes. so definitely mm-hmm. give her a follow and, and check out her website and uh, also want to say you know I gotta give shout outs to our sponsors that make this possible uh, you mm-hmm. know Southern Sound Outfitters check out their website uh, they have some great stuff some great apparel some new stuff coming out they got and they also support a lot of great uh, independent artists up and coming in the Texas scene and in the Oklahoma area and all over really but a uh, great great organization and uh, great they got some just a bonus they have some pretty badass apparel so check them out 
And uh, also Cowboys in Scott, Louisiana, Western Store Nightclub and Arena. They have the, the triple threat. Uh, they have live music all the time. Uh, this this last weekend for Memorial Day, they had a full lineup. And uh, this coming weekend, they do too. I, I normally post all those lineups. And they actually got some, some big names coming in the August time. I know they have Randall King coming in August. And they also have Jacob Bryant coming in August. They have Sam Riggs actually coming in July. So Very nice. They, yeah, they, they definitely keep uh, you know the people in there in a great venue. Uh, also want to give a shout out to Swamp Gear, Roto Molded Ice Chest, uh, local, local owned out of Orneville, Louisiana. They make some uh, some pretty great durable ice chests that uh, won't hurt the, the pocketbook as much as the big name brands, but also have all the same great features. So check them out at SwampShop.com, and they can have any kind of engraving customized. Uh, they do it them, themselves and uh, get it shipped out. They have some new hats, I believe. And, those guys uh, give shout outs to because they help us and they, you know, they promote and they get, they're, they're try to support local businesses as well. So, uh, and also, yeah, that's great. I say it every time, folks, independent artists, buy their music. If you like it, buy it because this is their paycheck. This is what pays, as you heard her say, funding for music it does. It costs a lot of money to get songs put out. <laughs> buy their music, follow them, support them, buy their merchandise, get them. You know, the more you buy and the more you support, the better they can put out. So definitely buy their music. And Kenzie's definitely follow our Spotify playlist with Kenzie on there and a lot of other great artists. Check out our website for all updates and and uh, we do we, we do some uh, some spotlight type stuff too. So uh, check our website out. Check Kenzie's website out. Check out our sponsors and we thank you guys for listening. And we thank you, Kenzie, for taking time. I know your schedule's crazy, but uh, we enjoyed having you. Well, thank you for having me. Definitely. So to talk and to you. Definitely, and uh, we look forward to hearing news and, and on the new, new stuff you got coming. Yes, I'm so excited. I can't wait. Well, if, if there, there's any kind of shout-outs or anything you'd like to say before we wrap it up? Um, I love you, Mommy. <laughs> Well, there you go. That's the the best one to give a shout out to. <laughs> All right, folks. Thank you so much. Until next time, Jacob, and we will see you guys down the road.